All right, here's what we're gonna install. Um, one of the complaints I've got, and a lot of people have, is with the seat. Yeah, you can adjust the height, but it's very sloped forward, which is okay for sporty riding, but what it does is it takes, this is supposed to be a sport touring bike, it's supposed to be comfortable, it's supposed to be able to put a lot of miles uh, at a time on the bike, and it's got you slid forward onto your boys, uh, if you get my meaning. Um, but it also forces all of your weight into one area as opposed to the seat being more level and distributing your weight evenly over a wider area. So it creates pressure points and it's not that comfortable. <clears throat> so I've got a little shim kit we're going to install here. And so to get to this point, I don't need to show you how to take off your seat. If you can't figure that part out, uh, this video is not for you. I'm trying to do this with one uh, hand here is it with my phone. So what you do is take the seats off. Take your rubber spacer off. There's a bolt here, one on the other side, and then there's push pin, push pin, push pin, push pin, push pin. And at that point, these tabs slide out. Don't try to pull them off. The, uh, these slide up and lock in. So take those off, put them aside. And at this point, you got one more push pin on each side down low. So take a T-handle or something, push the pins in. And at that point, this should lift up and out of there. So did I remove this one over here? Yes, oh, apparently there's another one right there. So there's push pins all over the damn place. Take those out, set them aside, so that side's out. And we got one over here, grab another. So we're gonna push that. And if I, can, I don't have any fingernails to speak of. So, okay, we got that push pin out. Oop, and it's on the ground. That's okay. We'll put it with the rest. To reseat those, you push those in. And when we go to put them back, you'll insert them and then push that pin down so it sits flush. And of course, I just dropped it on the ground because, again, I don't have cameraman and I don't have a mount that'll move with me to do this. So any case we'll put this off to the side so all this is going to do is get us to this point where we can take this piece off put that carefully aside so what this is going to do what your goal here is we don't want to raise up the back of the seat we want to raise up the front so this of course this is your adjustment for the normal seat height but adjust the entire seat up not just the front we want to lift the front without lifting the back so pull this out, and so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take out these screws, which is what holds the tank to the all of this. This is what holds the back of the tank in. We're gonna take these bolts out here. The spacers are gonna go in underneath, and it comes with longer bolts, okay? So that's gonna raise this up. I'll come back and show you this installed, because again, I need, well, I guess I could loosen these. Let's see, is that the right one? Yes. So, we're gonna loosen a D's, and then it looks like I need an eight millimeter for that. So, whoop, and that's gonna hit, so I'm gonna need to get a socket. So, I'll come back, we're gonna remove these, and then we're gonna remove these two bolts and these right here. When that comes out, there's gonna be, there's rubber grommets in there. So that kind of absorbs the shock and, you know, lets it wiggle if it needs to. Um, there's some with offsets because this bracket's gonna go up, which means these mounting plates, these mounting holes for the front seat, uh, for the front of the seat are going to raise up. The back is still gonna lock in over here where it does. We don't want the, however, the tank to come up with that. So there's some different mounts. So you're gonna pop out these rubber pieces and pop in the new ones, and the hole's gonna be closer to um, the, uh, the top or the bottom. Uh, yeah, to the bottom. So instead of the screw being centered in the middle, it's gonna be down several millimeters. And that's gonna let the tank drop back down where it needs to be, even though everything else is gonna be raised up higher. So I'll come back as soon as I've got uh, all these bolts out and then we'll put in one of the spacers, show you what that looks like and I'll have to just splice these all together. Okay, so we're back here for a second. What I've done is remove this from here. So that rests on there. These bolts go in and anchor to the tank. That anchors to the frame, seat goes into that. See how that all works? So I've taken this off. 
We haven't put the spacers in yet. I've only done one. I've removed that rubber piece and I put in the new one that these ship with, which I've got a second one. Uh, where the hell did I put it? Oh yeah, it's in my hand that's holding the camera. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this without dropping my shit here. All right, the spacers look like this. These are gonna go here on the frame, and then that stuff's gonna mount on top of that with the longer bolts. In the meantime, you can see, because this is gonna be higher, if you don't want the tank to come in, you want the tank to be able to drop down in and stay lower. And that's what these offset, instead of being in the center, you pull those out and you put in these that are gonna drop that. And then that's gonna go back on, and I'll show you what this looks like buttoned up as I get ready to mount it in a moment. These are gonna go here. Those are gonna fit right on top of there. And now it's gonna mount on there. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna raise, just raise everything that the seat plugs into. It's gonna raise it up by eight millimeters in the front while leaving the rear where it was. So let me go ahead and pop out this second one. You just basically, again, doing this with one hand. Two hands is easy, but I don't have an assistant to hold the camera. So take that out squeeze that pop that rubber piece out and pop in the new rubber piece with the hole on the bottom like that and it's going to look just like that so let me go ahead and put this one in and we'll be back all right try this again between doing this one-handed and kids playing basketball i don't understand why 13 year old boys playing basketball they have to scream and i guess their balls haven't dropped yet so they're screaming it sounds like girls screaming in the background those are actually males, believe it or not. Very annoying, because apparently standing next to each other, you can't talk to each other. You have to yell back and forth loud as you can. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got our new spacers. You can see they're kind of offset down the bottom, and they're going to sit on top of those spacers right there. So what we're going to do now is take, uh, let's see, the longer bolts that they sent me. I thought I had these out already, so now I'm going to try to unwrap these while I'm talking with one hand. It's got to be a better way to do this, folks. All right, so let's just put that down here. Let's empty out. Come on, you sons of bitches. Any other time, shit's falling all over the place and falling out. When you want to get it out of the bag, it doesn't. All right, so these are going to go through into the subframe. So we're going to hand thread those in. But we're not going to tighten them up yet. We want a little bit of slack in there. All right, the ones on this side aren't, there we go. All right, so now what I'm going to need to do is insert these bolts back into the tank. Now I will have to lift it just a tiny bit to get those holes to line up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. <clears throat> so what I'll do is get the tank back into position and get that locked in through there. Once that's on, then I'll center these all and get these torqued up. Um, the instructions will have the torque setting, uh, 17 newton meter, something like that. Just snug them back up to where they were, basically. It's not like you're putting a cylinder head on or something like that where it's really, really critical. You don't want it loosening, but um, you don't have to torque the hell out of it. Um, you can, if you want, put a little bit of blue Loctite on them. They suggested that you do, but the stock ones didn't have it, so I'm not going to. Um, if I feel one loosening up... The good news is with the seat sitting on there, the bolts can't actually come out. So if you feel it wiggling around, it moves at some point, put the blue Loctite. Mine is upstairs. I don't want to use red, which is all I have here in the garage. So I'm just going to do it without because the stock bolts didn't have it. So I'll need both hands. I'm going to lift the tank up just a few millimeters so I can get those screws in, get those locked in, come back and tighten this up. And then uh, we'll put the plastic pieces back on and we'll start playing with our seat adjustment. All right. So now that is all buttoned up. Everything looks good. When you look at the tank, see how the line is now consistent. We haven't really lifted the tank at all with that. Even though the mounting point for the tank raised, that's why we're using those offset um, rubber grommets. 
That way, if you look at the gap between the frame and the tank, it's pretty consistent the whole way down. So it keeps the tank right where it wants to be. What we've got to do now is just put all of our plastic bits back on. So this needs to go in like that. I need to go put in all those little push clips and shit like that. So we're gonna do all that, then slide in the side plates underneath. It's all very simple. It's just push clips, pop it into place, slide it into place, bolt, and a bolt on the other side. At that point, we'll come back in and we're gonna do the seat mounting. So just take pictures. Notice how it comes off. It's very obvious. Like I said, push pin, push pin, push pin, bolt, bolt, push pin, push pin, push pin, push pin, and two more over there. So a whole bunch of push pins, very easy to put back on, very easy to get off. Um, that is just a little tricky. I'll show you how to do that maybe in a second. It's just a matter of lining it up and sliding it into place. Be right back. All right, here's one of the last bits. Getting this piece in, okay? There are hooks. There's a hook there, there. All of these just slide into that groove, that groove, and there. And then the front is gonna be anchored behind that. So it's literally, you just kind of finagle it, pull that corner up just a tad. Actually, there we go, click. And then you put your bolt right there. That's what locks that into place. So I could take that, thread it by hand. Oops, a little bit. Let's see if I can get aimed on it. Okay, let's get that in there. Okay, so we got that bolt, that bolt. Everything's in. That's flapping, so it looks like I missed the bottom tab. So that's why you go over and check these things. So probably should have done that before I tighten the bolt. I could probably snap it in there without doing this, but you saw how it went in. So when you do it, you need both hands because you want to push it in here and in here. I missed the bottom tab, and that's because I'm holding the phone and I can't push on the front and the back at the same time. So let me go and do that, and then we'll come back and do the last piece, which is putting in the rubber piece and figuring out where we want to mount our seat. It's all buttoned back up. Now you just go and adjust your seat as you normally would. There's still a low and a high position. The only difference is we've raised the whole front. Everything that mounts to the front, where the tang on the seat goes into, where these spacers go, is just eight millimeters higher. The back hasn't changed. Now, I had it in the high position. I'm gonna go in the low position. Here's why. I ride this thing like a sport bike. My legs aren't uncomfortable, even with the pegs in the utmost position. That to me gives me a good sporty feeling on the bike. I just didn't like that I was sliding forward onto my nads um, and the seat wasn't that comfortable. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the lower position, but now the seat is raised in the front. You do wanna put the spacer back in if you're gonna use that, that lower position. Um, and it's, it doesn't change just because we installed these spacers. So let me get rid of my hex key. So again, this would be one of those things that's a bitch to show one-handed, but basically you're gonna slide this in so that this lip right here is gonna go in between there. These hooks right here are gonna go up in those holes and then this is going to basically plug into that. And that's gonna, that way when you put the seat in on the lower position, this will all be buttoned up tight once that's push, pressed in properly and there won't be a gap. If you don't put that in and you go and you put this into the lower position, you see how there's that gap right there? You wanna get rid of that. When you do it in the higher position, it moves the seat more forward and then that actually sits a little more forward and so that goes away. So I am gonna go do the lower position, which means I gotta go put that spacer in. So we'll be right back, because I need both hands for that. All right, there it is, all buttoned back up. Got the rubber piece in, got the seat in there. Um, the front of the seat is now eight millimeters higher than the back. I'm, I'm sorry, eight millimeters higher than it was. So now that seat sits a lot more level. Now right now it may not look like it, it's still canted forward a lot, and that's because I am on the center stand, which means the back tire is higher than it normally would be. Um, unfortunately it's dark, it's gonna rain soon. Not gonna be able to ride it tomorrow. Um, it'll probably have to wait till Friday afternoon, or I'm gonna be going up Saturday to GMD CompuTrack to get the suspension set up. By the way, the last time I said I was gonna install my frame sliders, there they are, Shoguns. Very simple install, took all of 
five minutes, pull the bolt out, put the new ones in, tighten them up. So there it is. That is the shim kit install. Um, would have taken me less time if I was just doing it and not stopping and taking a video and stuff like that. It really is easy. I mean, it's just, you know, all the plastic just comes off with mostly push pins and stuff. And uh, put the plastic back on, tighten everything up, and then adjust your seat. If I want to put it in the high position, which would be the normal high position with the front still raised 8 millimeters, I just take the seat off, pull up my rubber stopper to open up that top slot, and then I just have to move my plastic spacer kit, the one that comes with the bike for that adjustment. I have to move it back one, one spot so it gets it in that position. And then at that point, the whole seat will sit up higher. I like it. it. It's more secure, I found, in the lower position. I had a problem where the seat was rocking just a little bit in the higher position. It seems that for whatever reason, it just locks in better on that. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the install. Hopefully this helps. If you have questions, throw them in the comments. I can uh, help walk you through it. They do give instructions on their website showing the pictures. But sometimes video works a little better, especially with commentary. So... Um, I'm going to pull it off the rear stand and sit on it and see how it feels, see if my bar needs any adjustment. Um, and then I'll do a more of a ride review. Um, I've got like an hour ride up to Fairburn, Georgia to GMD CompuTrack and I have Kent set up the preload just to make sure that the bike's not, you know, wonky. I've got the preload and everything set where it needs to be. So I get the right amount of balance as well as suspension travel with no bottoming out. So I'll have, a, I'll have a few hours of saddle time, and I'll try it in the low position, and then maybe I'll try it in the higher position and see what it works, you know, how it works. The spacer kit that I have is a 6 or an 8. That spacer, that long one that went on the subframe and went underneath there, that had a 6-millimeter piece, and then there was a 2-millimeter piece stuck on top. If I thought it was, oh, a little, I can't imagine 2 millimeters makes a difference, but if I wanted to lower it a tiny bit, I could. But I think this will probably work. And if not, I only wasted 30 bucks. I think it's going to make a difference. We'll find out um, if I need to get a comfort seat. Either way, sloping down onto your junk isn't comfortable for long, uh, long rides. On this, you don't mind because you're constantly moving around the twisties and hanging off the bike and stuff. And on a spirited ride, it wasn't bad there. But if you're droning down the highway for an hour, yeah, it, it wasn't comfortable and it's a big complaint. So, And it's been that way since the FJ and the 900 Tracers and the other ones. So this is just the newest version tweaked for this model. But apparently that's been a complaint from, um, these, the, from these Yamaha bikes is that very weird angle of the seat. So you got questions, let me know. But hopefully this all makes sense to you and I didn't ramble too much. So I actually just sat on it real quick and it didn't make a difference. Now I can't attest to long term, you know, long time comfort in it, that'll have to come Saturday. But I definitely feel that my weight is distributed over a much broader, flatter area rather than all concentrated in one area because my weight is, you know, I'm, I'm sloped forward into that. It is a much flatter seat now. Now you can see it now that's on just a regular kickstand. Much better. The other reason you might think, well, dude, you're 6'4". Why would you want to sit down more in the bike? And that's because being tall the um the turbulence and stuff from the from the windshield it doesn't hit me in the chest it hits me straight in the helmet and it knocks my helmet around even with it up i have to scrouch down just a little bit and so i don't want to necessarily get a giant goofy touring screen i've heard that pug makes one that's actually shorter in a sports screen be more like that which looks better but it blasts you more in the chest that doesn't bother me it's when all the air and the turbulence is blasting me right in the face, your head gets knocked around and after a while your neck muscles get tired. So when I put it up, it makes it better, but I'm still so damn tall that I'm catching some of that. So I wanted to sit a little more lower into the bike so that I'd be more down in that pocket without having to slouch my shoulders and slump down into it, if that makes sense. So that's the, that's the two reasons. One, I can do a little more sporty riding. Um, and then I can uh, get a little bit more behind the wind protection that the bike comes with without having to invest in different screens. That's my logic anyway. Whether it actually works out that way, we'll see. We'll know Saturday. I should get at least three, four hours of saddle time. And um, let's see. Well, I don't even need any tools to change the ride height. or the, I'm sorry, the seat height. So that's what's cool. Pop off this seat, pop off that seat, pull out that rubber thing, put it in the area under the tank. 
and then just move your spacer and move the seat up. So you can adjust it in the higher position with no tools. So we're gonna try it that way right up to uh, Fairmount, which is about an hour ride. And uh, we'll see what it feels like. And if it needs more height, I'll put, the, uh, put it in the high position and ride it home that way. And we'll give a verdict and a ride review when I get back. But I wanted to mention that, that the wind buffeting on my helmet, I don't mind it in the chest at all. I mean, I'm used to riding naked bikes. This has no wind protection unless you, I'm laid down on the tank. So it's just when it's all concentrated right in your helmet and it's very turbulent wind, that's when it's like, okay, this isn't necessarily going to be fun riding out to Colorado or, you know, wherever I'm going. So anyway, now I'm really ending the video. Take care.